So, in the midbrain, there are some very interesting syndromes. So, there can be lesion at any level in the midbrain, and based upon our knowledge of midbrain anatomy and uh, the tracts, we will be able to figure out where the lesion is uh, when we know uh, what part of the body is affected and what problem uh, the patient is experiencing. So, let's start from the medulla, so and then we'll go up. So, in medulla, you can have medial medullary syndrome. Um, in which case, uh, of course, we, we just talked about the medial medullary area or in the midline, we know uh, based upon the rule of four, we have corticospinal tract, we have the medial meniscus and we have the 12th nerve nucleus, right? So, in the, in the, if there is a lesion right here in the center, you will have the contralateral weakness or the motor weakness in the body uh, because the corticospinal tract has uh, not decussated, not, sorry, has not crossed over yet and you will have contralateral medial uh, lemniscus effect, uh, uh, being affected because so by virtue of that you will have uh, loss of position and vibration sense on the opposite side because the dorsal column has crossed over and then you will have the ipsilateral or the same side of the tongue paralysis. So that is your medial medullary syndrome. Now the lateral medullary syndrome or the Wallenberg syndrome is very interesting and it's a very favorite test question. It's also called Pica syndrome because that's uh, this area is supplied by posterior inferior cerebellar artery and we know that on the lateral side uh, we have the ninth and 10th nerve nuclei in the medulla and then we also have the spinal cerebellar tract and spinothalamic tract. In addition to that you will have the fifth nerve spinal nucleus which is the sensory nucleus of the fifth nerve and then also the you will have Horner syndrome. So uh, if we recall from our memory of the of all these pathways, we will know that the patient will have uh, the loss of uvular reflex, loss of uh, taste sensation in the tongue, will also have loss of pain in temperature sense on the uh, on the opposite side of the body because spinothalamic tract uh, crosses over very early on and the we'll, patient will also have the same side ataxia because of the spinocerebellar involvement. Uh, at the same time, the patient will have ipsilateral or the same side Horner syndrome, which is we all know ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. So this syndrome is a very uh, involved syndrome. You have a lot of deficiencies going on here. So if you see this pattern where you have spinocerebellar, spinothalamic, fifth spinal nucleus, Horner syndrome, and ninth and tenth nuclei deficit, then you can say this is Pica syndrome or lateral, lateral medullary syndrome, and um, you may have you may see it in stroke. So this is our medulla. Let's move on to the next structure, which is pons. So in pons, you can have a medial uh, circulation problem, and then you can also have the lateral or the anterior inferior cerebellar artery circulation uh, deficit. And then the, the, they can be further subdivided, but uh, to keep it simple, uh, we'll say that if there is a medial or the midline problem, then you will have, again, corticospinal tract involvement. So you'll have uh, loss of motor strength on the opposite side. You'll have medial meniscus involvement, loss of uh, position and vibration sense on the opposite side uh, because of the because medial meniscus as we recall was dorsal column and then you will also have the sixth nerve paralysis on the same side so you will have the abducens nerve paralysis on the same side so patient won't be able to uh, look to the lateral side uh, and then if the there is a lesion on because on the anterior inferior cerebellar artery uh, uh, and there is uh, there is a lateral area involvement then you will have uh, the seventh and the eighth nerve and the spinothalamic and the spinal trigeminal uh, tract involvement. So patient won't be able to hear and will have a balance problem and will also have the uh, facial paralysis. At the same time, this lesion in this area can cause Horner syndrome. So because the remember the sympathetic pathway is traversing down. So there is another thing in the pons uh, which is a very fancy name called central pontine uh, malinosis. And uh, I, I know, I mean, I, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not very common, but it, the clinical significance and uh, relevance to the exam is that it's a very commonly asked question. And when do we see this? Uh, we see it in uh, hyponatremia or when we try to fix electrolyte balance very quickly. So the patient will have locked in syndrome because all the entire pons is involved. So you have a lot of cranial nerve involvement and the um, patient will be basically locked in. Next is, uh, uh, if we move up, we have midbrain. So in midbrain, interestingly, we have uh, very fancy three syndromes. Uh, so you have the involvement of the, uh, of the uh, due to the pineal, pineal tumor or a tumor in the pineal area, you have something called compression of the tectum, which is the 
the dorsal portion of the pons. So you will have, uh, sorry, the anterior portion portion of the pons. So you will have basically oculomotor involvement because then fibers are uh, emerging from here. So you'll have a lot of gaze problem. That's pretty much what you see because you don't have too much area uh, involved. Then you also can have Benedict syndrome. So in Benedict syndrome, again, as you see, uh, you have slightly medial and somewhat lateral area involved. So you'll have third nerve nucleus involved and this uh, is going to lead to down and out gaze. Then medial meniscus is going to be involved. So it's a midline structure. So the uh, uh, contralateral side uh, loss of position and vibration sense. And then you have cerebellar ataxia because of the spinocerebellar pathway being involved in right here. Then the last uh, in the midbrain is uh, Weber syndrome and Weber syndrome is very interesting because it is more wide spread and you can see that corticospinal tract is involved uh, right here. So the patient is not going to be able to uh, have any motor strength on the motor strength on the contralateral side. Third nerve nucleus again uh, any time there is a lesion in the midbrain you will see third nerve involvement and then something that we didn't talk about was corticobulbar tract so that also passes through the midbrain and that uh, in this area includes a seventh, tenth, and twelfth nerve. So your seventh, tenth, and twelfth nerve on the opposite side will be involved. And because it is a for seventh, tenth, and twelfth, because it is a supranuclear uh, palsy, you will have contral weakness of the face, contralateral uh, weakness of the tongue, and contralateral vagus involvement. So with this, we finish our midbrain, and the last uh, we move on to cortex. So in the brain, you have some specific areas and. Um, without going into the detail of all the motor and the uh, sensory areas, which are also very specific distributed uh, throughout the body, uh, we'll talk about uh, prefrontal cortex. So, if there is a lesion or a tumor or um, stroke or anything in the prefrontal cortex, sorry, you will uh, you will basically have personality change. That is the thinking area. Then you have uh, an interesting Broca's area. That is the motor speech area. If the patient has a problem here. Uh, a lesion, a stroke or tumor or anything, then uh, they will have expressive aphasia, so they won't be able to say much. Um, if there is a problem in the auditory cortex, then they will have a problem with uh, hearing, and then can, uh, this area can also give, give rise to auditory hallucinations, and then there is a taste area right behind that. Now, the uh, sensory speech area is called Wernicke's area also, and this is located right here in the sensory cortex. Uh, if there is a lesion here, patient will have receptive aphasia, so they will be able to say but not understand things. And then you have visual cortex, uh, so if there is a lesion in the occipital area, uh, this is a visual cortex, the patient will not be able to see except for in the macular area, so the mac there will be macular sparing of the vision. So I think with this pretty much we sum up uh, our talk on where is the lesion. I hope it was helpful and uh, we'll go over some cases in the class. Thank you so much.